Now, I want to make it clear right at the start that it's not really my goal here to try and criticize Episode 8, a movie that I obviously haven't seen yet and shouldn't pass final judgment on. To be honest, even with a few small reservations, I am excited and optimistic about this movie. Nor am I asking, with this being my weekly discussion video, for you to pass judgment on the movie either, though I suppose you can if you want to. What I'm really wondering about, and what I'm concerned about and curious to know if you feel the same or not, is with the increase in power level, if you will. And as I've already said a few times in other videos concerning the new trailer, there was obviously misdirection in it, and not everything can be taken at face value, nor is everything seen or heard in the trailer guaranteed to be in the movie, though I'd imagine most of it will be. Sure, a lot of people have cited how little the Rogue One trailers were indicative of the actual movie, and how many shots from the trailers didn't make the final cut, but keep in mind Rogue One had a massive amount of reshoots, something that, as far as we know, hasn't happened with Episode Eight. But there was one message from this trailer that does seem pretty certain. Rey has some type of new, special power, something that goes beyond just being force sensitive. And this power is so great that it scares Luke Skywalker, who George Lucas himself once said would go on to become the most powerful Jedi ever. Furthermore, Luke has encountered this power once before, which leaves us all wondering if he was referring to Kylo Ren, Palpatine, Vader, Snoke, himself, or maybe someone else we don't even know about yet. And sure, George Lucas no longer calls the shots, and Lucasfilm under Disney doesn't have to hold to the idea that Luke would become so powerful, but I do have to question what they seem to be doing to his character, again without seeing the movie to know for sure, and keeping in mind they did indeed have to do something to make his character and story arc intriguing. Because Luke is clearly a broken man, one that appears to be hiding from his responsibilities as a Jedi and from his family and friends, or he's just flat out afraid of this new type of power the Force seems to have unleashed, and went to the first Jedi Temple to learn how to deal with it. And we know what Yoda said about fear, that it was the path to the dark side. And no, I'm not implying that I think Luke will succumb to his fear and eventually fall to the dark side in this trilogy, though I wouldn't rule it out entirely. I'm just wondering if the only thing this new trilogy is really going to do is up the power level on everything, for lack of a better way of putting it. And yes, I get it, the name of Episode 7, The Force Awakens, should have been a big clue that things were about to change and become more powerful, as were Luke's words in the first trailer for Episode 8 about it being so much bigger. But I wonder if this is the right direction to take with the Force, to make it bigger and more powerful, to keep upping the ante and the stakes, and I'm curious to hear from all of you on this matter in the comments after the video. Because if you think back to the original trilogy, there was this subtlety and mystery to the Force that, in my opinion anyway, is actually what makes the Force so damn fascinating and awesome. The Force in those first three Star Wars movies was almost like a monster in a good horror movie, the kind where you only get glimpses of the creature and your imagination is allowed to fill in the rest. And as usual with the imagination, it has a tendency to create something bigger and better than what we'll eventually really see. And when you really think about it, it's crazy to realize just how little we actually see the Force used in those first movies, and that the two most impressive things we see done with it are probably Yoda getting Luke's X-Wing out of the murky waters on Dagobah, and Palpatine using lightning on Luke at the end of Return of the Jedi. And sure, we see other cool and impressive uses of it, like Force jokes, telekinesis, mind tricks, deflecting blaster bolts with lightsabers, and making one in a million shots, but that's about all we see it used for which leaves us to imagine just how terrifying Darth Vader really is. Or for us to wonder, and Luke to wonder, as Yoda is lifting and moving his X-Wing, just what else can be done with the Force? And the funny thing is, not even the prequel trilogy greatly expanded upon what the Force is or how it could be used. We didn't really see any new or crazy Force powers used in it. And of all the complaints I've ever heard about the prequels, I don't recall anyone complaining that we didn't get to see more powerful uses of the Force. And I think that's because, and I could be wrong here, most Star Wars fans have come to terms and accepted the fact that the Force will always be shrouded in great mystery, and we should cherish those few new pieces of information we get from time to time. But then, in the first five minutes of The Force Awakens, we arguably see something done that's more impressive than anything we've seen before, that being when Kylo Ren stops a blaster bolt in midair and just holds it there while he carries on a conversation. He later goes on to mind probe both Poe and Rey, and mind probing was apparently something that not even Darth Vader could do since he needed a droid to do it for him in A New Hope. Then again, maybe he just wasn't in the mood that day, or he just wasn't very good at it, and instead excelled at other things. And it has certainly been said that some Force users are just better at certain things, which certainly does make sense. 
And then later in The Force Awakens, we see Rey, who has either had no training at all or very little training at a young age that she's forgotten about, not only turn the mind probe around on Kylo, who has trained for years under both Snoke and Luke, but at the end of the movie, she goes on to just let the Force in by closing her eyes and defeats Kylo Ren in a saber duel, while once upon a time, it took everything Luke had just to pull a lightsaber from the snow to save his life from a wampa. And no, I'm certainly not trying to bring up the Mary Sue topic here. There likely will be a great explanation for what Rey was able to do, and my guess would be that Kylo Ren and Rey, as Ryan Johnson himself has said, are two sides of the same coin, which means there's a good chance they are drawing upon the same power source or aspect of the Force, or something along those lines. Whatever that answer ultimately is, I do think the success of this trilogy depends greatly on us buying into whatever Rey is and caring about her and her story, because not caring enough about Anakin was one of the biggest flaws of the prequels in my opinion, while people being fully invested in the story of Han, Luke, Leia, and others is one of the things that made the original trilogy so great. Now, with all that being said, I understand this is a different age of movies, that the original trilogy was groundbreaking when it was released and that it literally changed the industry, but that was 40 years ago. And Disney and Lucasfilm had to do something with Star Wars so that it could hold up against the seemingly infinite amount of entertainment choices out there and our human tendency to want to have the next big thing. And please don't hate me for saying this, but your average kid nowadays is pretty spoiled when it comes to special effects in movies, and wants to see mega battles between superheroes with incredible powers, all the while whole cities are being destroyed. Not a little green guy lifting a ship out of a swamp, or a guy in a black suit choking somebody. And if you don't think their top priority at Disney and Lucasfilm is capturing this next generation and turning them into lifelong fans and spenders, you're fooling yourself. And that's certainly not to say they don't care about you and your money, because they of course do, which is why The Force Awakens was exactly what it was. A movie that played off the nostalgia of the original trilogy, making a lot, though certainly not all, of the older fans happy, and yet gave us clues to something much, much bigger to come. And now that so many of us are hooked again, Episode 8 will be free to show us the future of Star Wars. It will start to leave the old weights behind and forge brand new paths to, hopefully, keep the old fans hooked, and more importantly, hook the new generation, and generations to come. And I'm not trying to predict doom and gloom here. We may all love what they're going to do with Star Wars, or most of us anyway, since not everybody is going to like it. That's just the way the world is. However, I see a lot of people in the comments to my videos who say things like, if they do this or that, I'll never watch Star Wars again, because this is how Star Wars should be. And a part of me completely understands and even agrees with you on some level while another part remembers just how much I loved Star Wars as a kid. Not that that love is diminished, mind you, but I very much want to see this new generation fall in love with Star Wars the way mine did, and sadly, it has a huge uphill battle against it, and just keeping it the way it has been isn't going to work. And yes, I know some of you are going to say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and point to just how much money The Force Awakens made, which was a movie that again relied heavily on nostalgia and was very similar to the original trilogy. While others will respond by saying, you showed your kids the original trilogy, and they loved it, and they're now huge fans, but, and not to sound like an ass here, I'm sure their love for it was in no way influenced by your love for it, because you likely made an event out of watching it, and expressed just how much you've always loved these movies. Whereas, if they just stumbled upon them at some point, and watched them, do you think they would have become hooked the way you were so many years ago? So here are my questions to all of you, and your responses can be as short or as long as you'd like, and as simple or in-depth as you'd like. Either way, I'll read them all and make a follow-up video that I'll have up next weekend. Anyway, the questions are, does Star Wars need to change and adapt to the times in order to compete with all the other entertainment choices out there, especially when concerning the younger generation? Do we need to see more powerful characters and force abilities, or will this ultimately ruin Star Wars and make it too much like a superhero franchise? So leave your comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.